So let's begin this morning on the top of the board online. Number one, so good morning to the president of the Registered Nurses Union of Newfoundland and Labrador. That's Yvette Coffey. Good morning, Yvette. You're on the air. Good morning, Patty. Interesting question posed by a caller yesterday about workers' compensation. He says as his, in his job as a fisherman, if they worked over 18 hours straight, then workers' compensation refused to cover them because they were a danger to themselves and to others. What's the workers' uh, compensation implication with nurses who work these extremely long shifts? Well, I'm not sure uh, if whether there's legislation around maximum number of hours worked in the fishery, but I do know that there is no legislation around maximum hours of work in healthcare, and that if someone does get injured um, on the job, they are covered by our workers' compensation system. How prevalent are workplace injuries amongst registered nurses? Because they've got a lot of physical work. You know, it's not just about uh, taking your vitals and delivering uh, medicines, what have you. They do some real physical work. And, of course, when you're 18 hours in, physical work becomes potentially dangerous. So how common are workplace injuries? Um, in the healthcare sector, we have the highest numbers of workplace injuries and workers' compensation claims in Newfoundland and Labrador of all industries. Uh, we also have the highest rates of uh, violence um, in uh, the workplace as well. So give us some, uh, some examples. So, I mean, people will hear that and say, well, are these examples possibly on a dementia ward where someone who doesn't really know what they're doing, or do we see other forms of uh, violence that are on purpose and willfully done? Well, while uh, we do have a high incidence of the workplace injuries in long-term care, and a lot of that is about the physical um, aspect of the work um, and also you know you are working uh, with some patients who have dementia but we also have incidents of violence uh, just recently in the past few months in an emergency department we had a registered nurse have her nose broke by a patient and then had to care for that patient uh, for the rest of her shift. Amazing stuff. And to know that healthcare workers uh, lead the league in workplace injuries and claims with workplace uh, for compensation is really quite something. Inside the world of recruitment, you know, the province reports that there was possibly some 200 nurses have been recruited. I can't remember if they say they were all from India, but the recruitment numbers that they report, it wasn't all, all people on the ground here. Then there was the complication between India and Can uh, Canada relations and the problems with visas. Can you give us an update about how many nurses have been recruited, whether it be from India or otherwise, in the last 12 months? So the last nursing supply report we had was in April, and we still had um, over 750 registered nurse vacancies in the province of Newfoundland and Labrador. We have been updated by NL Health Services, uh, the new amalgamated health authority, that yes, there are upwards of 200 uh, registered nurses from India. There was some delay with the visas and that, but that has uh, kind of worked itself out. But the work continues, even... Um, they couldn't go there on the ground to interview people and get their credentials done, but they were actually doing it virtually. Um, so we're not expecting to see any of these registered nurses, um, to my knowledge, of the 200 until spring uh, at the earliest. I know this is not your valley worker, it's not inside your mandate because you register, you represent registered nurses, but when we talk about trying to fill the gaps, and the province is going to entertain a pilot program regarding physicians' assistance, some of this work might be uh, already being done by registered nurses. Any thoughts on the implementation or the inclusion of physician assistance? Well, to my knowledge, and I have had a discussion with the Premier on this, um, we do know that physician, physicians are used in a few other provinces uh, throughout Canada. They are not autonomous. They cannot make decisions themselves or work alone. They work under the supervision of a physician, whereas our nurse practitioners are independent and work independently to diagnose, order uh, diagnostic tests and treat patients. So I don't see it as a benefit to the entire healthcare system. Um, I think we're better off investing our money in more nurse practitioners, which is something the health court and our recommendations um, recommended upwards of 70 nurse practitioners for care of the aged. Well, I'd like to get an update on the fact that the province was going to expand scope of practice for registered nurses, including allowed to prescribe medication, refer patients to specialists, but it came with additional requirement. I think it was three different training modules. We were unsure how that would be done, whether it be on the job or additional hours. We were unsure whether it be uh, an increase in the rate of pay for registered nurses and nurse practitioners. What do we know? Where are we with that particular expansion? Well, nurse practitioners already prescribe. Yeah, I, I didn't mean to say that. Registered yeah. nurses. 
So it's only about the registered nurses. And from my um, from what I've heard, there's um, I think it's approximately between eight and ten. I think. Um, who registered nurses who have enrolled uh, to do these three learning modules, which is on their own hours. They're paying for it um, themselves as a present, but there was a grant because Lab Grenfell is the area where these registered nurses are uh, coming forward to do it right now, and they actually had a grant um, to pay for the learning modules. There is no increase in pay once these modules are done unless there's a job reclassification done. I do know there is a lot of interest from around the province. However, I, from what I hear, they're waiting to see how these first group uh, make out and how it actually works before uh, they entertain adding more registered nurses to do prescribing. So would these RNs who have enrolled basically be working in more rural or most of the province where it could be very helpful for their practice to be expanded? Most definitely, you know, we think about uh, our diabetic educators. Uh, they're teaching patients about uh, how much insulin to take, you know, how much, how many carbs to take, what to do if your sugar goes up or it goes low. Uh, they have that expertise, and giving them the ability to be able to prescribe for these patients would be a great benefit not only to the patients, but time-wise for the registered nurses. There was also consideration to include this into the curriculum at the Centre for Nursing Studies. Has that been done, or is that still something that's just being thought of? Uh, to my knowledge, that has not been introduced into the curriculum yet. Anything else you'd like to add this morning, Yvette? I'd like to talk about the um, announcement that Minister Osborne made this week about the Centres of Excellence in Aging. Good. Um, you know, I was part of the Health Corps Task Force, where the recommendation was for 70 nurse practitioners. And that wasn't 70 nurse practitioners in long-term care. That was 70 nurse practitioners in community, in acute care, um, in the long-term care facilities for the continuum of care. So if a elderly patient comes into an emergency department, um, you know, the number one thing priority is to get people back into their home, to let people age gracefully, which is what we all want. And with the nurse practitioners, they are following them through the system. If they're admitted in acute care, then to be followed, uh, okay, how do we get them home? What do we need to do to get these people to their optim- their maximum health and ability to stay at home and to follow them through the system? And I did not hear any mention of that in the announcement um, this past week. And I'd also like to talk about, uh, I was just listening to a podcast this morning by COO of Lab Grenfell Zone about the inpatient psychiatric unit. The positions are not filled. Let's be very clear for registered nurses. They're actually bringing in agency nurses. Um, it's very difficult to recruit any healthcare professionals in the lab, uh, the lab Grenfell Zone. And one of our recommendations has been, and we've had discussion with the health authority and with the leadership of Lab Grenfell, we should be looking at the Lab Grenfell zone as a territory where there are increased salaries, increased incentives and bonuses for people to go and work in the northern region. There was a lot of stuff that people are anticipating to be included in the most recent, a couple of announcements, whether it be on health care and inside the poverty reduction. So I'm glad you put that on my radar so I can do the follow-up. And I appreciate your time this morning, Yvette. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good day. You too. Bye-bye. Yvette Coffey is the president of the Registered Nurses Union of Newfoundland and Labrador. Let's take a break. When we come back, Freeman's in the queue to talk about some uh, hobbies that can be very helpful for your brain. Don't go away. VOCM's Open Line. Call now. 273-5211 273-5211 or 1-888-590-VOCM.